from 20 Century Lanes in Portland. We're here for the title match of the Scratch Division of today's JBT event. Should be a good one here as Tristan Curtis has been on fire since early August. Looking to win his sixth career JBT title, but to do so, he's got to go up against top seed Michaela Douglas, looking to become the first female to win an open division event since last year. However, Curtis red hot right now off a 279 game in the semifinals and struck in the first and a flat 10 for him there in the second. Michaela opened in her first frame. So it'll be a slight early lead for uh, Tristan here, unless he uh, manages to whip this there. Tristan, a good spare shooter. He's going to take the lane out of play here and go hard and straight at it once he stops uh, fidgeting and actually throws the ball. <laughs> No problem at all in the 10 pin. Tristan's been involved in some pretty exciting title matches over the years here, and Michaela has been red hot, so I expect this one to be close. I'm not sure if you saw the previous game, but his carry was phenomenal. Yeah, we caught a couple of his carries off the uh, side of the camera here in the last game there as he was throwing good shots, but also uh, tripping stuff left and right. That's part of what you got to do to throw high scores sometimes. Pretty deep inside is Douglas, and wow, a ringing 10 pin. Was, that must have been the one I saw. He was just perfect. Ten pin. Michaela qualified at plus 111 for her five games today. I think that was second or third, and then shot a real solid 660 set in the semis to jump into the tournament lead. Also, textbook form at those 10 pins has the spare and an early 11 pin deficit. Mm -hmm. Michaela, the current Girls Invitational Champion, she absolutely leveled the field at the Girls Invitational this July. Nobody was in the same building as her, it looked like. There's the carry that she's had all day long. Mentally tough, physically uh, impressive. There's not a whole lot of flaws in her game. Bulls for Team USA. That hotbed of Yakima, Washington, my goodness. Is there anything else for the bowling alley in Yakima? I'm going to find out in about a month when we go there for the first time, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's a crossroads, a stoplight, a Denny's, and a bowling alley because there's nothing but quality bowlers coming out of there. I hope I'm not right. <laughs> Even though Tristan, with a little more rotation, both bowlers kind of on top of each other because he's got a little more ball speed as well and he's a little more side rotation. So both bowlers around the fourth arrow. Tristan getting it out a little bit wider, maybe. Fold on the semi-scorpion-ish lane condition today. They have an old wick machine here, so they're only able to approximate the scorpion pattern, but had the general characteristics where it's a little bit long. If you missed way wide right, it wasn't going to come back. Well, definitely flatter in the middle than a house pattern. It took minus 25 to make the cut here today. So a 195 average. I think the only time we ever laid out house here was almost plus 100, if I remember right. So, definitely not house. Well, Scorpion is one of those patterns where if you break it down correctly, you really can open it up because it's that longer length. So, you always hear about this on tour bowlers carving out a hole in the pattern. That, that works really well on Scorpion if you're all doing it as a group. This is the side of the house that the scratch semis are on, so it's as a whole the players have been carving out the correct spot on the lane, so they should have a little bit of hold to the left from that fourth arrow where bowlers haven't been playing. And all those high-powered bowling balls have dried out the surface to the right and you're on that very high friction HPL surface, all of that combines into a pretty playable shot right now. The last female to win an open scratch title, right here at 20th Century a year ago, Rebecca Ruggiero, soft bowling at Vanderbilt now. Mm. Yeah, both went high in that lane, and she came around the side of that ball, too. It's not Michaela's game to come around the side. Usually she's really, really forward with her rotation. If she does, 
you know, generally that ball is going to check up a bit early on her. It did there. Needs to make the 6-10 that she missed before we started recording to keep that deficit at 11. Look out. All right. Real good turnout in scratch today, so we used an eight-person step ladder finals. Keep on recruiting even more bowlers, and we'll do that all the time. Uh, it was Tanner Bowens, yesterday's champion, winning round one of that. And then Jordan Ferrer from Nevada won round two in a uh, darn near three-way tie. And then Curtis shot that big 279 last game to eliminate Ferrer and Michael Paulson. Better shot, but a half ten there. Kayla's going to be around the pockets. Just a matter of zoning in on getting those corner pins out, okay, really, for both right. bowlers. This is that hard surface ball, takes the lane out of play, and absolutely no problem at the 10. That 6 10 must have been a mental slip up for her there. That was too simple a spare for her to miss it the way she did. Okay. Tristan involved in that memorable title match at Kingman a couple of years ago, where a 260 something wasn't enough. <laughs> okay, I'm back to my own leaks. I got it, Brett. Uh, that's Forrester. <laughs> Sorry, guys, it's a little crazy. Thanks for coming. Hope you had fun. You know what? I'll interrupt you both. See you at Red Rock. Uh, Only 25 uh, closest so friends. Yeah, I'm going to go get your uh, lower leaks off at this moment. Lady Talkin's allowed to because she's been real sweetheart all weekend long and making it very simple. So she's allowed to mess up our entire title match. <laughs> we appreciate all the hospitality here. You might see us back again at 20th Century before the season's over. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Spare working for Curtis. Needs it to lay off. Boy, it sure does. Tristan said he's got room to miss, and that ball just kind of checked up right in the 1-3, and you could hear that strike. That was a cracking strike right there. Okay, gamblers, I've got six, seven pins The purple over machine. Emily Gray, full 39 pins over. Just left for college. Way to go, Emily. Tammy Pearson, full 42 pins over. Way to go, Tammy. And Bridget Ross, full 52 pins over. Congratulations, bowlers. All right, Bridget. You got three free games again, just like they used to have. I want free games. You get free games for just going over average? <laughs> Evan, you and me are getting the lane right after this. We get free games for going over average. I'm average like 178 this year. I might have a chance to break that before I break my back for crying out loud. See, Tristan takes that full approach six step. It's pretty unusual. And yeah, boy, watch that ball just roll out right at the one three. He has got a great look on this pair right now and took advantage of it there with a crunching double. See if Kayla has the answer here. <laughs> High game today, really not a huge game. She just was solidly great all day. 236, 235, 232, 226. Shots like that is how she's done it. And she says, come on, is it that hard? I'm gonna hit that other lane now. S also won the women's series today over Courtney Couch. Courtney and Michaela sort of owning the women's series here, not a surprise at all. Need to win three women's series events to qualify for the girls' all-conference championship this August in Vegas. That's got a hold. Ah. And where Tristan's able to currently generate a hold on that lane right now, it doesn't look like Michaela is able to generate that same hold. Then when she gets around it a little bit, Near checks up earlier, leaves that half ten. So trouble right now. She's gonna make have to make a move to stay in this match. Well, so what can she do? If she wants to stick with the same ball. Probably got to go a little bit left and grab a little more of that head oil and save some of the energy of that ball to the back end. She's got more than enough hand to continue to move in and still get carry. That's not a problem for her. Uh, and the other option is a ball choice, but boy is it tough to change balls when you've averaged 220 something all day and lapped the field and are just uh, a couple of frames from the finish line here. But if uh, Tristan can pack back two more racks, it might not be an option and that's tough. Wow, whoa. 
You're not kidding, you got a lot of room right now. That ball was a good three or four boards left, and that's being generous off his hand right there, and it just stopped at the pocket. He's throwing the ball really fast, too, so he's got the, the ball speed in his advantage right here. That was a critical break right there, because... Hey, but that's a product of uh, knowing your equipment, knowing where to play in the lane. Getting a little confidence from the great last couple months you've had. And when you're rolling good, those things happen. As now he gets the light hit to trip out the 457 last. And uh, we have an on fire purple man on 41 and 42. What? Not orange today. No, no. The, yeah, the man who usually. Uh, Makes me do a color test on camera with the uh, orange and the plaid and the lime green. Beautiful shot from Douglas there. She's got to stay in it. She can still strike out for 218. That will require a miss from Tristan, but you never know when those misses pop up. It just does not matter, folks. Boy, girl, whatever. It's all about talent here. Age. We've had six-year-old. Almost win two tournaments this year. There it is. Maybe that was a little more ball speed too. Maybe it was out of anger, judging by the way she looks right now. But whatever it is, that got that ball to settle just like Tristan's doing right at the 1-3. And that was a uh, perfect double for her right there. Boy, girl, so many talented females over the years. Ali Ijams, junior gold winner, Natalie Jimenez. Of course, Rebecca, up and coming ones like Marina, the old timers, Sammy Rocco, Shannon Pluhowski. Well, the string ends at four there, so if Tristan has to mark here by sparing this four pin and marking the tenth, then he'll have this title. Sorry. Tristan uh, started this heater that he's on right now by winning the Touring Players Championship back in August, beating the best of the very best on tour for just an emotional and a huge win for him. And then he also won at Acme so far this year, so he's already got a title this season in the Northwest. This would be his second already in the Pac Northwest, which would be a early Bowler of the Year type numbers. It's all about points, even more so this year. The point leader is Bowler of the Year. It's not figuring out points per or titles or anything like that. You just got to accumulate the most. Do that through travel and performance. For all the talk, deservedly so, of the Kents, the Krells, the Cruises, and the Weirs, who are all off in the Midwest Bowling College right now, Curtis had to beat Kent and Weir, respectively, to win those two titles. So uh, his name belongs up there with the Elite as well. Oh, that checked. Wow, boy, oh boy. You saw that ball check up at like 45 feet, and you thought it was going to go right through the schnoz, and then it just checked up and rolled out. Right of the pocket. That is a perfect look on the lanes. I mean, I guess you can say unlucky to leave the nine, but I mean, he could have big Ford if he had the wrong ball in his hand right there. I mean, or if he just got touched. Yeah, that's that's the modern game right there. All he has to do is spare this nine, and he wins. Should he miss it, Michaela can strike out to tie. Be a sport. Miss it. No. <laughs> and now that wasn't going to happen right there. 220 is going to be enough, and I know that's disappointing for Michaela, but that's a uh, big win for the uh, powerful Purple Man, now from Central Washington. Try to free. Yeah, two Sundays in a row. Oh, I thought Saturday. I hope not, man. <laughs> 228 is just enough. Very well bowled game from Tristan, and I feel like it was just one frame too late for Michaela. I bet you she strikes out. What? You struck out. I just struck out right there. I'll tell you what, I've said it before in these videos. I got the tripod that this camera is sitting on from a 99 cent store. It's not even worth 39 cents. I got robbed at the 99 cent store buying this tripod. Sorry, 99 cent store. They marked it up from the I got the markup right there. It's Douglas did get that first one. Look at all that power from the fourth arrow. Right. A lot of girls have trouble playing left of even the third arrow and getting enough power. That is not a problem for Michaela. Hey, look, 207, just that, that 610 first frame miss just looked a little bit deflating. 
and you know, just it was too much catch up there, too, too long. Fine effort from her, though. We'll see plenty of her this year, without a doubt. And we'll be back for more Pac Northwest action in Yakima in about a month. Her home city. Nice job.